Welcome to BoundariesForEffectiveMinistry.org and to part two in our series on the Garden of Gethsemane and the Second Amendment. In part one, we established the scriptural basis for the right to bear arms to defend our lives from aggressors. Here, we'll read what the Second Amendment actually says, and more importantly, how does it say it? There are two opposite translations of this amendment. Those with limited understanding of the very purpose of the Bill of Rights take the fatally flawed position that the Second Amendment vests the right to bear arms in the state. This is the position taken by those who favor gun control, except for public servants. To uphold this position, they have to omit the third clause, quote, the right of the people to keep and bear arms in order to make the amendment say, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state shall not be infringed. Arms would not be privately owned, but supplied by the state in regulating the militia. This argument must fail on its face because it unlawfully implies that the politicians can rewrite the amendment to fit their gun control propaganda. It is the individual who has a God-given right to keep and bear arms for defense. Nobody has a right to initiate violence against others. To make this clear, the founders, who were masters of the English language, wrote the Second Amendment as a periodic sentence. A what, you ask? Well, it's nothing difficult to understand because you use them all the time. The main clause with the subject and verb comes at the end of the sentence. For example, there was no way to get in touch with her, so I just quit trying. And so it is with the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. People who do not know simple English grammar and syntax should not read or expound on the Second Amendment period. And this includes most politicians and pastors of government-controlled 501c3 churches. The Second Amendment sentence says plainly that it is not a government right, but the people's right to bear arms for their defense against any who would harm them. Notice that the amendment only provides for arms used for defense. It provides no safe haven for those who would bear arms to initiate violence either at home or abroad. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching part two of our series on the Garden of Gethsemane and the Second Amendment.